Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to part 2 of Direwolf20's Mod Spotlight on Astral Sorcery. Just in case you missed part 1, we took a look uh, a bit ago about the first parts of this mod, uh, the, the Discovery chapter and the Exploration chapter. Today, we're going to take a peek at the Attunement chapter. Uh, we already took a brief look at the telescope, and now it's starting to need to go a little bit smoother. So let's go ahead and progress throughout this really cool magic-based mod. So guys, one of the first things we're going to want to get into in this mod once we reach chapter 3 is the Crystal Lens. This is a way of redirecting starlight from a source location. Uh, the source location is usually one of those crystals that we find in uh, the, the dungeons that we already checked out already. And uh, spoiler alert, you're going to be able to create crystals like those yourself later on in the mod. Uh, so with the Crystal Lens, you'll be able to redirect the starlight uh, onto certain things. Um, so we'll notice that there's uh, some information here that you can read. But basically, this is also one of the first times you're probably going to encounter uh, something that's a little bit difficult to craft. Uh, it's not super difficult, but this is where the height of the crafting altar and the proper access to the sky and having the crafting altar in the right location is going to start to come into play. You'll notice during daytime, um, this here uh, little little bar is starting to creep up in terms of power. It looks like it's probably getting to be night out. So if we were to take a look at the sky here, where's the sun hanging out? There he is. He's starting to go down. So the, stun's, the sun is starting to go down. It's starting to get darker out. That means that we're going to have um, better access to those stars. Um, and this thing's going to be craftable here. So again, this is just to demonstrate. You can see where the, the power level needs to get to before the craft is available. And once the bar reaches that point, you're going to go ahead and have the ability to craft the crystal lens, which we're going to go ahead and do right now. Um, you'll notice that there's uh, some more particle effects going on as we get to higher tier crafting. That's going to be another theme that continues. Uh, lots of really nifty and cool particle effects in this mod, by the way. Um, so there we go. Just got ourselves a crystal lens. Sweet. Nice. I like it. So uh, we've got ourselves the crystal lens. That is going to be used here uh, to create something. Uh, Right now, you can see iron transmutation is kind of the next use. It says that the beams of light from those crystal lenses seem to have an effect on certain objects, but we're going to need some kind of linking tool to make sure to link the beam. And that's one of the next things we're going to need to take a look at making. So the linking tool, as you can see here, is made um, inside the crafting table, of course, uh, with a couple pieces of wood and some sticks. So let's make sure we've got some sticks and we will go ahead and give that a try. So we're also going to need a rock crystal and a couple aquamarines. Cool. And we now have the ability to make that guy. Perfect. Beautiful. And again, more and more power available to you when the constellations are up in the sky. Oh, look, there's one that we discovered yesterday. Nice. So the linking tool is what's going to be able to link your lenses to different objects. So let's head back to our little temple here that we found and go underground. Now, these crystals work better when they can see the sky, so this is probably a perfect time to go ahead and uh, start breaking the temple apart and making it so that we can, in fact, see the sky. So let's remove this water source block and start digging into the ground. Perfect. So this guy can see the sky better, he's going to be a little bit better off. When we break the crafting table here, which is an optional step, you can see that laser beam goes away. It won't automatically lock onto a piece of iron ore. You need to link it with the tool, with the linking tool. So you can either um, link it directly or you can use those lenses. Um, so selector to crystal here, and now it's going to start uh, enchanting this iron tool. So the way the linking tool is, you, you right click on what you want to link, you right click on the target, and then uh, once you've uh, taken the crystal tool out of your hand, it stops the linking process. So just switching to a different hotbar key item or something like that will, will remove that linking process. Now over a period of time, uh, and again, this thing seeing uh, some starlight is probably a good idea. So let's make sure that there's a, a line of you know light going down here. This will, as we can just see, turn into star metal ore. Beautiful. And that's going to be the next task available to us. And, and it's gonna be an important part of this. So placing another piece of iron in that same spot will work and turn it into star metal ore yet again. Um, again, if you wanted to, you could use the lenses at this point um, and we could link the crystal to the lens and you'll notice that we've got that beam going there. And we can unlink this as well by shift right clicking to unlink the crystal location from the block. Um, and if we wanted to put another piece of iron ore here for linking, uh, we could do that as well. So we could link from the lens um, to the block there, and you'll see that now that, that beam is occurring. Pretty cool. 
There are other things that you can transmute, by the way, uh, as you can see here. Maybe iron ore is not the only thing that can transmute. And a good way to find that is to look up star metal ore um, as a recipe in JEI. If you click on show all recipes for starlight transmutation, you can see some of the other things that you can transmute uh, courtesy of this starlight transmutation process. So that star metal ore, as you can probably assume, uh, can be smelted into star metal ingots, and we will skip that step and just get ourselves a few. You can also drop it onto a grindstone and grind it up into a dust, uh, which is what a lot of the um, things are going to be, or, or a lot of the items you're going to be using in this tier of crafting are going to require. So uh, getting yourself some star metal is pretty much the goal of this uh tier of stuff. Um, so the next task, now that we've got ourselves some star metal ore, there's a few other things we can start looking into, specifically some nifty gadgets. So two of the wands that are first available to us in the active channeling section are the formation wand and the conversion wand. These are definitely useful gadgets. Uh, so let's take a look at those now, formation and conversion. Uh, so the conversion wand is basically a uh, wand of swapping. So you can swap blocks one from the other. So shift right click on the block you want to swap. You can see we have a target in our left top left corner here that indicates that cobblestone is the uh, block that we're swapping with. And then if we simply right click, you can see that it swaps out all the blocks that are highlighted with cobblestone. Pretty simple and straightforward. And uh, you know, not, not something that should be difficult for veterans of uh, playing with mods to play with. Sweet. Uh, you'll notice there's a little energy bar on the bottom. That energy bar recharges on its own rather quickly, so it's not something you have to worry too much. Formation wands are also pretty useful. Uh, formation wands, you can, sh again, shift right click to select the target that you want to go with. Um, and then you can, um, kind of from a distance, highlight a block, and it will build a line of blocks to you of that block type. Again, assuming that you have it um, in your inventory. So if you kind of target that side of the block, you'll see that it'll kind of build to you kind of thing. And it's actually a really nice way to build. Cool. Sweet. Very nice way uh, to build stuff. Definitely recommend playing with the formation wand a bit once you get your hands on it because it is super useful. Another wand specifically mentioned in the book here is the Vortex Wand. This one, also really fun to play with. Um, basically, it's a grappling hook. Woot, that is cool. I like it. So a neat way to travel around. It doesn't have an infinite range, by the way. Um, so you, you will reach a point where uh, it, it won't reach and you're kind of out of luck. As you can see there, it just happened. It just kind of fizzled away. Um, so it does have a pretty good distance though. So it's a nice way kind of to get around. Pretty cool. One thing I want to make clear, by the way, is how those rock stats affect some of the things in the mod when you use them to craft. So let's take a look at that real quick before we proceed. So just as a brief demonstration, I've got a rock crystal in here uh, with a certain level of purity. Um, so size 266, purity 5, cutting 16. I've got another one here uh, with a different small, smaller size, more purity, um, slightly different cutting. These attributes um, kind of affect the results of the item that we're going to get, so the lens that we get. Basically, the better the stats, the better the lens. Some things that can um, affect the lens are basically, there might be a bit of energy loss across a distance um, or or certain attributes within the lens. It'll kind of become a little bit more clear later on in the mod, um, but you'll notice that the lens indicates the size, purity, and cutting on the lens. So really, your best bet if you want to have a really good lens is to have a really good rock crystal. And one of the sections that we kind of skipped over in exploration is this little bit about crystal growth. Basically, if you drop a rock crystal of a certain size into a pool of uh, starlight, the liquid starlight that we were getting uh, in part one, you'll notice that eventually it will kind of grow. So if we drop some liquid starlight here and we drop this rock crystal in there, um, it'll start to absorb some of that liquid starlight and the size will increase. So if we take a quick look at the rock crystal at size 266 and we can drop it in there, so after a period of time, the crystal will absorb all the starlight liquid and you'll see that the size is increased. So at this time, you can adjust the size and then you can improve the cutting by grinding it on a grindstone. So between dropping in the crystal to bump the size up and then putting on a grindstone to improve the cutting but then reduce the size, you can come up with a pretty decent crystal. 
So as you're starting to get more and more uh, involved in this mod, you're going to want to find more and more of those rock crystal formations, but they are actually pretty rare. Luckily, once you've got yourself a resonating wand, you've got the ability to find them pretty easily. Just fly around at night and look for these white particle effects. This is a pretty good indication that you've found uh, some of that ore. Then you're going to want to dig straight on down to bedrock. Well, maybe not straight down, because that's breaking Minecraft rule number one. Hey, look, there it is. Nice, we found it. Beautiful. So again, uh, if you're looking for more of these rock crystals, which they are actually kind of hard to find, um, definitely go out at night, hold on to your resonating wand, and you'll see those white sparkles. Note now that once I've harvested it, the white sparkles are gone. So the next thing to look at is attunement. And basically what the attunement chapter talks about is that general generic starlight is all well and good, but you notice that certain constellations have a very specific effect on their environment and give off a very specific form of light. And the attunement process is all about focusing individual constellations, the ones that we were discovering through the telescope, remember, uh, into specific uh, powers and features. Um, so remember the constellations that we discovered that guy, and there's another one around here somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, those guys are, are pretty much what we're talking about. So we're going to play with the attunement feature today to check that out. Um, so it tells you there's a way to filter specific constellations and maybe even amplify them. So let's take a look. Um, if we check in the chapter here, we'll see one of the things we can craft uh, is an attunement altar. And that's going to need to be on a rather large multi-block structure. It's a 19 by 19 by 6 multi-block. So I'm going to go build that off camera, and then we'll see how it works. By the way, this giant structure is like perfect for the formation wand, just as an FYI. Uh, use the formation wand to build this thing. It's, it's really super good. All right, I'm pretty sure I uh, reconstructed what we had in the book here. So let's give this thing a shot. So essentially, you'll know you've done things right when you place your attunement altar in the center and you see some white sparkles appear. Yeah, we did it right. Nice. Now you'll remember the spectral relays that we saw earlier in the first part of the spotlight. In order to align this specific altar with one of the constellations in the sky, first off, you need to have discovered the constellation in the sky. So remember, we only found a couple of them so far. Uh, but let's pick Armara, because that seems like a pretty good one. Uh, let's get our Armara paper here. We should have it inside of our book still. And hold it in our hand. And when we do so, all of a sudden some purple particle effects will start to appear on this area. And you'll notice that they kind of correlate to what the Armara constellation looks like a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, looks pretty good, right? Yeah, totally neat. So that lines up, right, with kind of what the Armara constellation looks like. Um, if we pick another one that we found, I think we found Dissidia, right? I think that's another one that we discovered already. Um, we'll find that the Dissidia constellation starts to glow as well. Um, note that the constellation um, both needs to have been discovered already, but, all, oh wait, we didn't do Dissidia yet, right? We didn't do Dissidia. We did Avidus. Cool. So those purple particle effects start to align as well. The other thing that's important is that the constellation is actually in the sky when you're ready to start setting this up. So you can see the purple particle effects kind of indicate where to place the lenses. Let's do our Mara like we originally planned. So uh, our Mara is still up in the sky, right? Good. Let's go ahead and place our lenses in the designated locations. So one goes here. Uh, I'm going to put Avidus away just so I don't get confused because that would happen. We'll place one here. We'll place one here, 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 and then the final one will go here. And you'll know it worked when this happens. Hey, that looks familiar. How cool is that? All of a sudden, though, it got a little bit turned off. That means that uh, it's getting a little bit too dark. Let's go ahead and set the time back to 1800 so that it's nice and, and high in the sky and available to us. And we'll say, oh yeah, that's looking good. Nice. So the, the moon was setting, it was about to become dawn and we lost that um, focal point. So we've now attuned this altar to the uh, constellation Armara. Sweet. What does that allow us to do? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. There's a couple things we can do once we've attuned a constellation. First off, um, there are alignment perks, and you can look at those in the constellation page. Now that we've discovered this aspect of knowledge, there's a ritual effect um, that you can complement. So there's rituals that we'll take a look at in, effect, in, in a little bit, but you can also attune your player. Uh, and to do that, you just uh, stand in the center. 
Nice. Now there are five major constellations and seven minor constellations. You can only attune your player to a major constellation, and when you do so, it's going to imbue your player with certain stats and attributes, um, and it gives you like a nifty little uh, thing you can do. So Armara, I believe, is a protective slash shielding kind of thing. So if I guess correctly, the perks that we're going to unlock here are going to give us um, some kind of shielding ability. It's, it's going to be more of a defensive constellation. Nice. Look at that. Very cool. I like it. So in a moment here, we'll finish, and that looks about right to me. Uh, so if we take a look in our book, we'll see there's now a perks tab over here. Um, and we can see that we've got the Armara perks. So uh, there's a elemental shield, take less damage from elemental damage, um, take less damage from falling, uh, reduce overall damage taken, pretty cool. Now considering this perk tree is pretty much all about um, taking damage, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that leveling up involves taking damage. So I've gone ahead and turned off peaceful mode for a moment so we can check this out. So first, uh, it looks like we have one perk point available to us. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock Tough Skim, uh, which is neat, nice, check that out. Boom, we've gotten a perk. Uh, reduces overall damage taken. It's a basic perk and it's active. Uh, so now we gotta basically use this uh, and we wanna take some damage, right? So let's go ahead and set the time uh, back to 1800 here and we'll uh, spawn a couple zombies to let me take some damage. Nice. Good. Let's see how that worked out for us. If we check the perk book now, uh, we should see we filled up some experience bar there, right? So basically taking damage under the Armara perk is what gains us more Armara perk. Um, other um, constellations will give us other abilities that we're going to want to go ahead and level up. Um, and those might increase your damage output and do all kinds of other nifty things. Now, once you've bound your constellation to your player, you're pretty much locked into that, um, but you might want to change your mind. So for that, you've got the Shifting Star, which is craftable. It's relatively expensive, but not terrible. Um, and what the Shifting Star does is basically um, disperse the constellation's effect on the player. So hold right click to activate it. You'll see some particle effects going on and suddenly your power fades. Um, and when that occurs, you no longer have a perk bar. You can go back and get the same perk you had before, but you're pretty much going to lose all your perk points. So go ahead and check out some of them, see what they give you and then pick one that you want to stick with and level it up. And players are not the only thing that can be attuned. Rock crystals can be attuned as well. Uh, just drop it on the altar there and it's all of a sudden going to start attuning. And you'll see all kinds of nifty particle effects indicating that that's happening. If you noticed in JEI, there is a simple rock crystal, but then there is a rock crystal for each type of attunement. So tuned to Armara, something seems to be here, means that's a constellation you haven't discovered yet, tuned to Avetus, etc, etc. And uh, all the fancy particle effects indicate that we are now attuning that rock crystal to this constellation. Rock crystals being attuned to certain constellations are going to be used in a moment with rituals. We can now go pick that up. And as a reminder, um, the altar kind of shuts down once the constellation that it's lined up to is, is fading from the night sky. So as the, the sun starts to rise, this thing's not going to work. It really only works at night. So you'll note that we now have an attuned rock crystal, which is attuned to the Armara constellation. Neat. Um, if we go into the constellation page under Armara, uh, we can see that there is a ritual effect. Um, rituals are going to be used uh, next, is what we're going to take a look at. Basically, it's a multi-block structure that can affect an area around a rock crystal. And each constellation has its own ritual effect. Uh, the ritual effect for Armara, for example, channels the repulsive forces that emit from this light into the near area, creates a small force field reflecting projectiles and pushing mobs outside its range. Neat. Let's give it a try. So we just checked out the Shifting Star, Alignment Perks, and Crystal Attunement. Next up is the Ritual Pedestal. And this again is going to be a nifty little multi-block structure. Let's build it. So that I think looks right. Uh, so we basically get ourselves a Ritual Altar pedestal and we drop it right in the center there. Uh, again, it's probably going to want to be nighttime. And we want to put our attuned rock crystal right in the center. Sweet. Hey, things are happening. Beautiful. Again, each constellation will have its own effect on the world. Some make plants grow faster, some damage mobs, some push mobs away, some help out with different things. It's pretty cool. Hey, this seems to give me absorption resistance too, so that's pretty nifty. Nice. So this was our Mara. Um, it will also um, reflect projectiles and push mobs outside its range. So let's give that a shot, shall we? So I'm going to get a zombie and maybe even a few skeletons as well. 
And there are ways, by the way, to improve this. Oh yeah, look at that, he's getting pushed away. Sweet. Skeletons too? Not bad. Yeah, look, it's, it's deflecting his projectile. Ha! That is cool. And like I said, there are definitely ways to improve this. Later on, we'll be able to adjust the area that this ritual affects. So for right now, it's just going to surround the ritual pedestal itself, but later on, we'll be able to have it affect a different area. There's also ways to improve it, uh, one of those being ritual acceleration. We will take a look at ritual acceleration in the next segment because it's easier to do once we can make our own light gathering crystals. Uh, for now, I'd like to show you guys the Celestial Gateway. Personal favorite of mine. So this is the multi-block structure for the gateway, and the gateway itself goes in the center. Pretty cool. Gateways allow you to travel from one location to another, a, another gateway in the world. So basically, if you want to travel from this gateway that I built off camera to this gateway, let's give it a shot, shall we? All we have to do is stand in the gateway. You ready? Check this out. Boom. Once you're standing in the gateway, you get this nifty particle effect going on. Pretty cool. Check that out. Nice. Any gateways that you can travel to are represented by yellow stars. So that yellow star right there maps to the gateway that's way off in the distance. So you can see it's pretty much in that exact direction. Um, so yellow stars will reference gateways. And as you look at them and hold left click or right click, you can see that little particle effect happen and poof, you'll be teleported right over to it. And then you can step off the gateway and explore whatever area you're in. So a neat way to teleport from one location to another. And again, if you want to get back, just simply get back on the gateway, uh, look through the yellow uh, for the yellow star and hold right click. Poof. You'll notice now, by the way, that once you've used a gateway, um, you can see um, as you hold right click on the yellow star, a little image of what it's going to teleport you to. Pretty cool. It should be noted that there is no distance limit for this, so you can pretty much teleport anywhere in the world that you've placed another one of these gateways, including across dimensions. Um, in uh, the same dimension, you'll have the star in about the general direction of where it is. The star might be in a random spot uh, on, on the area here if it's a, a cross-dimension thing. So at this point, we've pretty much covered everything there is to cover in this chapter, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade our Celestial Altar next. So as we can see, there's not enough power at the moment to do this, so we'll make sure it's the middle of the night, which should boost our power up, and we can now upgrade our altar. Beautiful. Nice. The altar upgrade process just takes a few minutes, um, and as you can probably guess, we're going to need to upgrade the multi-block that sits beneath the altar, and we'll take care of that in just a moment. But I want you guys to see the cool particle effects that occur when you upgrade to the next tier altar. Ta-da! And we've now got the next tier altar. Your vision expands, and we have learned about constellations. dun dun dun, dun which is a whole new chapter, uh, which we will cover in the next part of the spotlight. But let's uh, take a real quick look at upgrading our altar now. Uh, because again, just like last time, it won't work until we fix the multi-block underneath it. Um, and for that, we're going to want to check in the book here and uh, make pretty much this. So this is about the multi-block structure that we need to make uh, in order to get this guy to be upgraded. So hopefully I did that correctly, and we've got a bar. Nice. So obviously, uh, the starlight hitting this altar is not super ideal at the moment, uh, but if we, you know, set the time to late in the day, we've got a pretty good, but it's not all the way full. So every time we upgrade the altar, we need more and better focused starlight in order for this altar to be fully capable um, of running. So with that said, I think it's a good wrapping up point for part two of the spotlight. We will come back in part three and check out uh, the fourth chapter, which as we saw a moment ago is named Constellation. Uh, the Constellation chapter has even further uh, nifty abilities, including the capability of making your own collector crystal. Uh, however, first we're going to need a starlight infuser. So that's going to be one of the first steps uh, in the next episode of the spotlight. Uh, the fourth chapter is not quite as big as the third one, which is probably good news because we'll probably get the fifth chapter in as well. So part three of the spotlight will probably be the end 
for now of Astral Sorcery. But like I said, the mod author is continuing to update the mod and add new things. For now, Dial20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed part two of the Astral Sorcery mod spotlight. Lots more cool stuff coming up in part three. Even more nifty gadgets. All right, guys, take it easy.